When I first put out some videos reviewing the image quality of leading smartphones, a number of you suggested that I take a look at the Sony Xperia 1 because of its 4K HDR OLED display and color reproduction that's inspired by Sony's mastering monitor. So even though this phone is almost one year old and bound to be replaced very soon, here's a quick video to benchmark various picture quality attributes of the screen. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thieu. I'm a display reviewer and professional calibrator. The Sony Xperia 1 is the world's first smartphone with a 4K OLED display. The aspect ratio is 21.9, which may be too awkward to hold comfortably in the hand for some people. But personally, I don't really mind a longer unit. The 21.9 screen allows users to watch Cinemascope movies full screen without top and bottom letterbox bars on compatible apps, although 69 content will be presented with black bars on both sides, a classic case of give and take. The 6.5 inch screen features a class leading resolution of 1644 x 3840 pixels giving us 643 pixels per inch, which is comfortably ahead of even the 498 ppi on the Samsung Note 10 Plus. The combination of Pental Diamond subpixel structure and beautifully distinct spectral power distribution indicates that the OLED screen is sourced from Samsung Display. Screen uniformity on our review sample was supremely clean, with no sign of dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting at all. If you see some smudge marks, it's actually dust on my camera sensor. I really need to find out how to clean it sometime. Being OLED, it can deliver wide viewing angles, and there doesn't appear to be too much color tinting of axis. The Sony Xperia 1 offers two picture presets under the image quality settings submenu, namely creator mode and standard mode. Standard mode uses the native color gamut at all times, and so would be oversaturated for Rec. 709 content. For accuracy, you should choose the creator mode which will adapt the color gamut to track Rec. 709 and DCI-P3 appropriately depending on the source content. Video image enhancement is also disabled in creator mode to prevent any unnecessary video processing from messing with the original creative intent. Back in the display submenu, three white balance presets of warm, medium, and cool are available and you can also customize the white balance using red, green, and blue sliders. Even white balance warm was slightly too blue in the grayscale, running at around 7000 Kelvin on our review unit, so we took advantage of the red, green, and blue sliders to neutralize the grayscale, achieving an excellent result. One caveat though, the luminance output on the Sony Xperia 1 is highly dependent upon the APL or average picture level, so if we switched from using full screen to windowed patterns, the gamma tracking wouldn't be as flat, and calculated delta errors would creep up. Similarly, if we used full field patterns, average error was less than 1 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured, which is of course fantastic, but if we used windowed patterns during our measurements, average error would go up with some colors exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Error 3. For the maximum HDR impact, you should disable adaptive brightness in the display menu, then set brightness to maximum. Peak brightness measures 360 nits on a 10% window, and 320 nits full fill, which is lower than other 2019 OLED smartphones we've tested to date. If you leave adaptive brightness enabled and bump brightness up to maximum, peak brightness may increase to 500 nits, but that only happens in very bright environments, which is definitely not suitable for watching HDR content. Because of the relatively low peak brightness, the PQ curve on our Xperia 1 review sample undertracked the ST2084 standard 2 so HDR content would look darker than competing handsets in a side-by-side -side comparison. Most shadow detail were intact, and the Xperia 1 managed to resolve up to 1900 nits of specular highlight detail. DCI-P3 coverage came in at almost 100% UV and more than 80% Rec. 2020, which when combined with the inky blacks of OLED technology really does make colors pop. 
the phone's YouTube app can be played at 2160p, and the image did look sharper than other phones with lower PPI. But part of the reason may be because the active picture area is smaller due to the presence of black bars down the sides. To sum up about the Sony Xperia 1, I like that 1. White balance can be calibrated to an accurate level for faithful color reproduction of the creator's intent. And 2. On certain apps, you can watch Cinemascope movies full screen without the presence of top and bottom letterbox bars. However, the peak brightness was on the low side among flagship smartphones, probably because its higher number of pixels cannot be driven too bright, taking into account battery consumption and heat management. As a result, HDR videos can look less impactful, especially when placed beside rival handsets. Overall, for brightness, accuracy, and consistency when watching video content, I think the iPhone 11 Pro Max is still the one to beat right now. If you have found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.